What's up guys, it's your favorite QB coach and give me six months of your time, I'll give you the best golf swing. I'll be alive. Whoa. Whoa. So welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we got the classic slicer golf swing for you today, but let's hear it from himself. What is he currently struggling with? Steep na down swing to chicken wing no finish o nao shitai desu. So I think this is gonna be perfect for all of you at home, so yoshiku. All right, so now the question becomes what body part is directly correlated to the face angle? So we already answered that for the hand path. We know what body part, it's kind of the arm attached to the shoulder joint. But for the face angle specifically, what body part, if I move it, it moves the club head or moves the face angle? Yeah, that twist. So basically, twisting the shaft on kind of a clockwise or counterclockwise axis. That twist is going to have the, a pretty predominant twisting of the face angle. Also, if I twist the shaft this way or this way, that also has a shift in where the face points, right? So basically, coal versus coal. Yeah, door hinge release. Alpha. And then also, the last one is going to be the handle height, right? So if the lower the handle, the more points. Higher the handle, more points, piggy. So the last two we just talked about, we probably don't want to use in this context in terms of fixing the face angle because we're trying to fix it more so um, through the counterclockwise release. Or sorry, not release, wrist angles. So basically, in terms of wrist angle, that'd be kind of more flexion or extension. So we need a little bit more flexion image. Yeah, very good. So then the question becomes how much and kind of when? So how much does he think we should try? <laughs> as much as you can. Hack your percent, right? That's always the initial guess. Yeah, always the initial guess. That's the easy part of this. The timing is typically the harder part, right? So when do you want to start is the question first. Yes. All right. So my rule of thumb is when it comes to start time, you should always place it close to when the face starts to open up drastically in the swing. So if it's at setup, <laughs> then you have to change it at setup. I don't think that's the issue for him. I'm just saying that would be the start time. Or if it happens in the takeaway where you really open the face, that's when you got to start the motion. So for him, he kind of starts to open the face almost kind of immediately. So I would try to, in terms of this flexion move, start to gradually start it on the takeaway. Right away, basically. Yeah, and then I wouldn't reach the full amount till P5.5, or basically when we were checking that one position on camera, that would be when I'd reach the full amount. If, if he goes like this, maybe puts the club at the ground, kind of holds his wrist like this. So full range of motion is this much, so kind of close to almost Qju. That's full range. So I want you to gradually do it, and reach the full amount at P5.5. There you go. There you go. Once you get that feel a few times without the club, try to put the club in your hands and do the same thing, and then we'll make a golf swing. <laughs> try one more. Pretty good. To me, it looks like he's peaking at the top, though. Try one more. Try to get that full amount a tiny bit later. There you go. So when the hands are lowering, you should still be increasing. So if you feel like you can't increase, that means you peak too early. There you go. Beautiful. All right. So now he's got the feel. Let's try it with the club. All right. What's he think? Yeah, machine is not too much. The technique of the angle in general. But the club pass was bad. Ah, the shaft, the shaft grip. Not sure if he did the hand path, but he felt like he did the shaft or the face angle better, the yeah. wrist. Yeah. Let's take a look. Okay, so bef I'm going to upload this, but before we take a look at it, let's just quickly review the, the very, very beginning, right? So your top of swing, this was kind of where your face angle was pointed, so very open. A little bit of cupping here in the wrist, right? Then as we start down, even though you steepen so much, your face was still open. <laughs> <laughs> so we know that face was wide open. So that was kind of the before. So now let's go take a look at this one. All right, so here's your top. So in terms of just the face angle, we can see it's almost, if anything, 
not quite fully parallel to the sky, but it's definitely much better than where it was before in terms of positioning. Yeah. Now we see the wrist has a hair reflection there, maybe like 10 degrees or something like that. Oh, and then we see the face angle in a be much better spot, right? And the shaft in a much better spot. So now your face is a little bit turned down. Maybe 10, 15 degrees. Interesting. So now you've gone into much more of a, not even a draw pattern, you're still pretty neutral, I'd say, but you're definitely much more neutral, if anything, closer to a slight bit of a draw pattern. And we're kind of seeing that domino effect of the shaft, right? Yeah. All right, questions with that so far? All right. So maybe before, if he tried to add flexion, maybe what he was doing was peaking kind of before the top. And then from there, because he, whenever you peak, when it comes to flexion, it's kind of hard to hold it. Like when you change directions, it typically some people almost go back towards extension. Maybe that what he was doing before. So then from there, those are the two main points there. Now, he doesn't have any shaft issues. So I don't think we necessarily need to talk through the whole how much and when process with shaft. Maybe we'll quickly review it, just so if he sees it get still a little steep, we can you know work on it by himself. But I would assume if you fix the face angle and you fix the hand path, the shaft's probably gonna fix. But let's just quickly go over it. Okay, so for him then, what uh, body part does he think would be directly correlated to the shaft flattening and steepening? Would it be your shoulders? Would it be your neck? Would it be your knees? <laughs> Elbow has, I think, uh, a very strong correlation. I wouldn't say direct, but very strong correlation, I agree. Yeah. So, you know, this is what I'm about to say really depends on your mobility, but I could be super internal, but still flatten the shaft. Now, it's much more difficult to do that, I agree. So that's why I'm saying it's a strong correlator, but not direct. Then obviously, if I'm this way, it's more difficult to steepen, but as you can see, I do have some range of motion to still do it. But it's, it's all relative to your mobility in the wrist and forearms, but it's, it's not directly. So what's the direct? Like if I do this, the shaft has to flatten, or if I do this, the shaft has to steepen. Like there's no way around it. Is it my shoulders? <laughs> yeah, wrist and forearms, you're right, 100%. So those are the direct correlators. Like I can't, do this and the shaft not go that way. Maybe I could try to like really <laughs> twist my body and that would at some point eventually steepen the shaft. But like if I do this, the shaft is going that way. It's directly correlated, right? Yeah, so that's the benefit of knowing the direct because the, those ones would help probably if you fix them, but they wouldn't necessarily get you all the way to the goal. I, I would agree, uh, assume most of the time. In this sense, if I were hacky percent, I, I can't rotate my forearms more than this, or else I'm gonna break my body, right? So that would be the opposite direction of a steeper. So then the question becomes, <laughs> well, how much of this should I feel, right? When should I start? All right, that's it for you guys on YouTube. If you guys wanna watch the full video, it's gonna be on the membership site, so make sure to sign up for that, link down below. But let's hear his wrap-up points. Very good. So thank you guys so much for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, share, sign up for that membership site, and I'll see you guys in the next video.